In this video, we will go through the derivation of the backpropagation algorithm. We will start with a review on the forward propagation. Then, we will introduce the training data and training labels for a supervised training framework. The training will have as objective the minimization of a loss function. We will introduce, therefore, a local error through the network. We will start by defining an output error and then we generalize the error to a non-specific L layer. We will also review briefly how to compute the Jacobian of the composite of functions. Finally, we'll see how to compute the parameters gradient. And therefore, we'll review the equations for the backpropagation algorithm, which can be used for stochastic and mini-batch gradient descent for minimizing the loss function that we have introduced. We start with an overview of the equations we have already seen so far. X is going to be the vector of components x1, x2, up to xn. which belongs to R size of layer 1. Then we have that A of layer L plus 1 is equal to our nonlinear function, in this case the sigmoid, of a quantity that we call weighted input, and we write Z of layer L plus 1, which is simply sigmoid of, of our mappings for the layer L, which is mapping the activations of layer L to the L plus 1, where L here is equal to 1, 2, up to L minus 1 and A hat is equal to the vector A with bias on top A L plus 1 will be of size S L plus 1 Finally, we have the H, the hypothesis, based on the parameter theta, capital theta, applied to our input X. It's equal to the activation of the last layer, capital L, which therefore belongs to R, S, capital L, or we can also say R, of k, capital K. Our theta, j, is the mapping that is mapping the layer j to the j plus 1 and therefore has dimensionality size of the layer j plus 1 and gets as many input as the current layer, so sj plus 1, is, which is the bias. And our uh, capital theta is the set of all the mappings for all the layers. Uh, which is mapping the layer the layer 1 to 2, the 2 to 3, up to the last one, which is mapping the layer uh, capital L minus 1 to the final layer, capital L. To train our system, we provide some examples. Here we have a capital X, which is providing the actual data, which is organized in this way. So X is the matrix, of row vectors x1 which is the first example then we are going to have x2 which is the second example we have again x3 up to the last one 
which is going to be x m and y is the matrix of labels which has m rows like x and then we have the first label y1 second label y2 third label y3 up to the last one y m the number of columns of m as we saw it's k because we saw that h of theta of x it's belong to rk and we have that of course we have m rows in a similar way of course we have m rows for the x matrix and the number of columns is going to be equal n Let's write this in a more uh, extended way. So x can be written as a table, basically. So here we have the vector 1, x1. Here we have the vector x2, up to the last one, vector xn. And therefore we have here x1 of first sample. Then we have x2 of first sample up to xn of first sample and same below. So we have first feature, sample number 2, second feature, sample number 2 up to the last feature, still for the sample number 2. And then we can go down to the last one, which is going to be the m example feature number one m example feature number two and up to the last one feature number n of the m example we are going to have something similar for y as well so y can be written as y1 y2 up to yk And then we are going to have first sample label number one, first sample label number two, and number k, and so on. the last one so we have y m first label y m second label y m k label if k it's equal one then the matrix y is going to be exactly just the vector y. We can now define a loss function which is evaluating how far is our prediction from the actual label. Our loss function L, which is a function of the parameters only, can be expressed as an average over all the, all the errors of the given example. So i equal 1 to m. We provide to our neural network all the m examples and we can compute the average. And this is going to be our uh, loss function. Here we are going to drop the index i because otherwise it becomes uh, a little bit messy. But 
This one basically expressed the output error of the network. The error, which is a function of the output of the network, will tell us how far we are from the true labels. And an example, a standard example of error function could be the mean square error, which is equal to one half. The one half term is going to be helpful in later uh, steps of the difference between y, which is for the i example, but we said we are going to exclude this for the moment, minus the output of our network of which we have fed the example i. And this one, it's simply one half summation over k of yk minus, so we have that this one can be also written as our A of layer L. So YK minus A component K of layer L squared. This is still considered for the example I, but we are going to take away this notation, otherwise it becomes really uh, unbearable. We want to keep in mind that E is a function on the output of our network where X and Y are fixed. And theta can be wired. Our goal would be to find the rate of variation of our error when changing a given parameter, theta ij of layer L. In this way, we can move from the evaluation of the error done in theta towards a point which is going down the slope of the error based on the parameter space. In this way, if we have our cost function and we are here, we can try to go towards the minima of our cost function. Let's introduce now the local error. If we have our weighted input zi of layer L and we replace it with zi, so itself, plus a small variation, so delta zi layer L, then we expect the error E to change from E to E plus what? The variation rate of the error with respect to this particular uh, weighted input multiply, of course, the variation of the perturbation. Here we can see uh, two different cases. Uh, the first case, we consider the absolute value of the variation of the error to the, the uh, specific weighted input to be greater than zero. And therefore, we know that um, some variations in the 
weighted input, zi, can bring some improvement. Instead, when we have when the absolute value of the variation of the error with respect to the uh, specific weighted input uh, is nearly zero, we have that um, this neuron is uh, near optimal. And therefore, variations in the specific weighted input won't bring any uh, relevant influence on the final um, error E. We see that the partial derivative of the error with respect to the uh, specific weighted input can be considered as a term of error. So if this error is greater than zero, then we can still uh, improve our cost function. If the error is um, zero, then we, cannot, we can no longer uh, change much. So we define delta i of layer L as the partial derivative of the error with respect to the specific weighted input of layer L component i. And this is the error at ith neuron at layer L. Let's compute therefore the uh, output error delta i of layer capital L. So we can simply write the partial derivative of the e with respect to the a of last layer component i and then we have the i the a component i of last layer with respect to the z i component i of last layer which is equal to what so the first one is the partial derivative of our error function with respect to the output of the network multiply by simply the derivative of our sigmoid for the component i of the uh, weighted input of the layer capital L, last layer. And let's see what these two elements are, because we already know basically everything. So let's say we consider our error E equal one half the summation over K of Y K minus a k of last layer squared. Well, therefore, we have one half multiplied by two, then the summation disappears because the all the components are going to be zero, but the ith component, which is going to be therefore a i l minus y i so this one here if we use the uh, sum of square errors it's simply a i l minus y i and here we are going to have the derivative of the sigmoid. Uh, let make, let's make a zoom. If we have sigmoid of z, which is equal to 1 plus 
exp of minus z minus 1 then we simply have that the derivative of the sigmoid is going to be so the minus 1 comes down here we have 1 plus exp minus z minus 2 multiply by exp minus z by times minus 1 then we can multiply and we can write this one 1 plus x minus z square times 1 plus x minus z and minus 1 And therefore we have these two simplifies and they become one plus x minus z minus one and then minus one plus x minus z minus 2 and we can easily recognize this one as to be the sigmoid of z and this other one sigmoid square of z so we can write a sigmoid of z which is multiplying y minus sigmoid of z and also we have that sigmoid of z it's simply a so this is a which is multiply which multiplies 1 minus a so in this case we can simply write that this one it's simply a i of layer l which multiplies 1 minus a i layer l for sake of generality we can keep our uh, more compact form where we still have the partial derivative of the error and the derivative of the nonlinear function just in case you would like later on uh, to change the error function or the nonlinearity. Finally, we can write the vectorial form of the delta, the error at layer, at the last layer, uh, which is going to be equal to the gradient with respect of the input of the um, error function, which is component-wise multiplied by the derivative of the nonlinear function utilized. Again, in our specific case, this component would simply be the last activation minus the label, and this component would be last element component twice multiply 1 minus a of l we would like now to compute the error at any l layer of the network to do so we need to express our error at layer l as function of the error at the following layer. We have written the error at layer L as the composition of the error at a layer L and the error at a layer L plus 1. And therefore we have to compute the partial derivative. Let's refresh 
how to compute the Jacobian of a composite function. Let's say we have a function g which goes from r to rn differentiable in u0 and then we have a function f which goes from rn and which is scalar field so it goes to r and which is also differentiable in x0 which is equal to g of u0 we have that h which is a composition of f and g which goes from r to r is derivable in u0 and the derivative of h in u0 is equal the Jacobian of the f in x0 multiplied by the Jacobian of g in u0 and what is this? this is the classical um, matrix multiplication uh, but more specifically since f is a scalar field we have the, the Jacobian it's simply the row vector the f the x1 in x0 the f the xn in x0 multiply by the derivative component wise of g so we have g1 prime in u0 down to the last one gn prime u0 which is equal to the scalar product of the gradient of the first function computed in x0 and the derivative of the second one so we have here that the current error at layer L is being expressed as is a function of the error at the following layer. We have that the delta i of layer L is simply the e to respect to the z component i of layer L and delta j of layer L plus 1 is going to be equal to the e and here we have the z j of layer l plus 1 we can also write this one as the scalar product of the two Jacobians so it's the summation of all the components sum on j of d e d z j of following layer multiply by d z j of the following layer with the current layer we actually know what is this first part which is actually delta j of layer l plus 1 we just have to find out what this second part 
is, which is not that complicated. So this one is the partial derivative of the weighted input at layer L plus 1 component J with respect to the weighted input component I of the layer L. So as we said, partial derivative of the weighted input component J of layer plus 1 with respect to the weighted input component I of layer L. To perform this partial derivative, we can simply write Zj, so the, the J component of the weighted input layer L plus 1 as function of the uh, current layer. So this one is going to be equal to the summation over k of the uh, parameter theta jk of layer L multiplied by a hat layer L k. This one can be simply written a summation over k on theta jk layer L of the sigmoid of z k layer L. And then if we perform the partial derivative uh, for respect with z i, we simply have that the summation goes away and the output is going to be uh, the argument argument of the summation where k is set to i. So simply this one is going to be theta j i of layer L, the derivative of the uh, nonlinearity of Z i layer L. Finally, as we saw from the, the previous slide, we had the, the error delta component i at layer L. It can be expressed as the summation over j of the, the component j's of the error at the layer plus l plus 1 multiplied with the partial derivative of the weighted input component j with respect to the component i of the weighted input at layer l and we can simply substitu substitute and we have that this is equal to summation over j of theta j i layer l which is multiplying the delta j of l plus 1 and the final derivative of the sigmoid z i layer L. Finally, we can write the vectorial form. So, given that the component i of the error at layer L is equal to the summation of the parameter j i, not i j, of layer L multiplied by the error component j at layer L plus 1 multiplied by the derivative of the nonlinear function of the same component can be written in a vectorial form as the matrix theta at layer L transposed which multiplies the error at the following layer and then we have component multiplied by the derivative of the nonlinear function at layer L for the weighted input at layer L. 
our last effort will be done to compute the uh, partial derivative of the error with respect to the specific parameter. Now that we have all tools and amenities over this slide, we can see that the final uh, equations are pretty easy to write. So we have that the partial derivative is going to be equal to the partial derivative with respect to the uh, following layer weighted summation delta z i of following layer multiply by derivative of z i of the following layer with respect to the parameter i j of layer L for every i and j. And we know that this one it's simply our error component i of layer L plus 1 and this guy over here it's simply the j component of the activation at layer L. We computed this one from the forward pass and we have computed this one on the left hand side from the backward pass. Finally, we can write the last formula, which is writing the total partial derivative of the error with respect to the parameter at layer L. This can be written as A at layer L, which multiplies the error at layer L plus 1 transposed. So we have the first one is a column vector and the second one is going to be a row vector. So we can easily tell that the product is going to be the matrix uh, which has the same dimensionality of capital theta of layer L. And finally we have the uh, list of five equations we are uh, required to compute in order to perform back propagation. So at the beginning, as first step, we have that the first activation is equal to the input to which we additionally add the extra plus one uh, as a bias term. Then as second point, we compute every other weighted input at layer L plus one, which is equal to the mapping of layer L applied to the activation of layer L. Then we have the deactivation. It's simply the nonlinearity applied to the uh, weighted input. And then again, we have the A hat is going to be uh, simply the uh, A with a plus one bias additional term. As a third point, we compute the error at the last layer. So we have the uh, gradient with respect to the uh, input to the error or basically to the, with respect to the output of our network, which is then multiply component-wise with the uh, derivative of the uh, nonlinear function utilized. Then we can backpropagate the error through the network uh, by utilizing this formula, where we see uh, the transposition of the weight matrix multiplying the error at the following layer and then component-wise multiply by the derivative of the activation function. We can see here that we haven't specified any particular error function or any activation function. So based on your choice of error or activation function, you can simply modify this formula to adapt to your specific uh, training. Finally, we can compute the uh, variation of the error with respect with any of the parameters used in the network 
as simply uh, the product of the activation of a specific uh, layer L, multiplying the transposed of the error at the following layer. Finally, if you would like to perform a gradient descent, uh, we can uh, choose between the stochastic gradient descent, so stochastic gradient descent, uh, which is simply saying that the, the current parameter should be updated with the following rule, so equal to the current parameters minus uh, learning rate eta, which is multiplying the activation at layer L and the error at layer L plus 1, as we just saw. Or if we instead would like to perform a batch gradient descent or mini batch, Uh, we simply have that the update rule is going to be that theta L is equal to theta L minus uh, the learning rate and the average of our errors, so our updates as well. for the example I.